Okay, so I just quickly want to go over the importance of referencing and understanding how your subject matter actually functions. So I would highly recommend that you guys go on YouTube or on Google and, you know, do some studying, understand how your subject matter functions. In this case, it's a grenade. Uh, but, you know, I'll just be giving you a quick, just a brief overview about this grenade and its, uh, its different parts in the grenades and how they actually work. Uh, so over here, we've got the main grenade body and inside the main grenade body is obviously our explosive material. And then here at the top, we have a fuse and attached to the fuse is a striker and a striker spring. And then on the fuse itself is uh, something over here called a lug. And then attached to the fuse itself is, you'll see it's like this handle. And this handle is called a spoon. Um, and then over here, we've got our safety pin and our ring. Uh, but in, in this case, since I was reimagining this design, I decided to add two uh, safety mechanisms. So obviously you don't usually see this. I wanted to add like a button, a press, re a press to release safety button, uh, just as a, you know, to improve the design aesthetic. And then um, actually the safety pin and this ring is not what causes the explosion. Uh, basically when this is removed off the spoon, that allows the spoon to uh, basically fly off the grenade. And it's when the spoon gets removed off, gr off the grenade that the grenade actually uh, that's where the process for the grenade explosion uh, actually takes place. So within the fuse, like I said, there's a striker. And when the spoon flies off the grenade, the striker comes in contact with something over here called a percussion cap. And that excessive force basically ignites uh, like a chemical, a slow burning chemical delay. And uh, that's when you've got this delay and you have to throw your grenade before it goes boom. Alright, so why am I telling you about all of this boring information? Like I said, I think it's important that you understand how your subject matter functions. So now that you can identify with the different parts of the grenade, uh, you can go ahead and include these particular features in your design. And it will help with the overall, you know, believability. So, yep, I think it's time to get started. Let's do this. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off by creating a new project. And just the reason for doing this, obviously, is just to keep everything organized. Uh, I'm going to call my folder the MK2.0 grenade. You know, just so all of my files are contained within this folder. Okay. Right, so we've created our folder. And uh, let's get started. Right, so I'm going to insert an attached canvas. I'm going to select this plane. And I'm going to select my image. You'll see that I actually found an image online of a MK2 grenade. Now, I'm just using this image as referencing. Uh, we are going to be reimagining this grenade, but obviously we wanted to have similarity, so I'm going to reference this design and make sure that the overall uh, dimensions are similar. And as you can see over there, I'm actually calibrating the sketch to be 4.5 inches. So if you want to create something to scale, you're capable of doing that by calibrating it. And then I'm just going to edit the canvas and I'm going to decrease my opacity so that my canvas is basically see-through so that I can see my sketch and the the actual image as well. You see I'm using the line tool over here and I'm going to be creating half of a profile sketch and the reason for doing that is because we're going to be revolving the sketch 300, uh, 360 degrees to create a solid body. Uh, so you'll see I'm just creating my sketch over here. Now you see by each of these crevices you'll see that I'll be placing a point and it's extremely important that you do that because uh, these points are actually going to come in handy for when we use the sweep function. So you'll see between, uh, at the center of each crevice, I'm just placing a point over there uh, during the sketch. So you guys want to do that. And I'm just going to complete the sketch and then we've got a completed sketch because it's orange. Just trimming off that last piece, uh, piece of the sketch. I'm going to stop the sketch, hide my canvas so that I can see my sketch. And now we're basically going to be using the revolve function. So under create, revolve I'll select the sketch as the profile and the axis is the uh, horizontal line on the side over there and as you can see as soon as I clicked on that it revolved the sketch 360 degrees and you can see those uh, lines will be placed by the crevices I mean those points you place by the crevices I've created these lines now I'm creating a new sketch over here a a two-point rectangle and we're basically going to be creating a sketch by these these edges that were created for us. Alright, so I'm just making it the following dimensions and then I'm selecting all of the edges of my sketch and by doing that it will allow me to copy and paste this particular sketch. So I've got all of those 
edges selected and now I can copy and paste the selected sketch. So I'm just going to move it down here to each of these lines. And you saw in order to get to that sketch I actually had to hide my body there so in case any of you missed that. So again I'm just copy and pasting and you know just placing these sketches in the correct position. And like I said, uh, we're basically going to be using the sweep function in a moment, using these sketches. So that's why I said it's important that we have these lines that we place by those crevices. And then um, you'll see I'll go to stop sketch. I'm going to go to create and sweep. Uh, and basically, I'm going to select the sketches, the profile and the path is going to be that line. Now you'll see it basically, I'm putting my operation on cut because I want this to cut uh, through this object that we just created. And you'll see this is actually a really important part about creating the grenade. Uh, this is where this whole technique comes into play and I'm just selecting these edges and I'm applying a chamfer to them. Uh, now if you're going for... Uh, okay, I want mine to look a little bit sci-fi so I wanted to give it a hard edge that's why I'm using a chamfer but if you want a classic MK2 grenade I'll recommend make use a fillet instead but like I said we're reimagining this we're making it a, a sci-fi grenade so I'm using chamfer then I'm just going in here and I'm going to apply a fillet just so I get a nice round transition so we've got a hard edge and we've got soft edges you now it adds a nice uh, design aesthetic to the design so making sure that I apply that fillet to all of these edges and I'm holding control to select uh, more than one edge as well. So it applies that value to more than one edge as long as I'm holding down control and selecting more edges. So now you can see I actually went back in my timeline I'm editing the feature so instead of 360 degrees now I revolved at 45 degrees and I'm applying a fillet uh, to all of these edges now so again this is where the whole technique comes in for actually creating the grenade uh, so in a moment we're actually going to be using the pattern feature a circular pattern feature to create our grenade so again over here uh, like I said if you're going for a softer grenade use a fillet instead well I am using a fillet uh, but uh, I'll only be able to fill it to a certain distance because I used a chamfer but if you actually used a fillet instead of that chamfer early on, you'll be able to, you'll be able, you'll have a greater distance to fillet over here. But for this particular purpose, uh, this particular distance was far enough for me. You'll see over there, we got an error. I couldn't fillet beyond that point. So this particular distance was perfect for me. I'm just seeing how far I can take it before I get an error message. Again, just adjusting those values. Okay, so I reached my limit over there. Uh, so I'm just going to go back. And uh, we've created a section of our grenade. Now, in order to actually create this grenade, remember we changed it to 45 degrees. Um, now, basically, we have to create eight pieces. So you can see I went into sketch. I'm just creating a cylinder because we're going to be creating a pattern around that cylinder to create our grenade. And I was just making sure that it snapped to that, uh, that edge over there. And now I'm going to go to create, pattern, circular pattern, my object, oh, my object is going to be this part that we just created and the axis is that cylinder and you'll see I'm typing in 8 just so it revolves around uh, 360 degrees and that's how you basically create a grenade guys, it's a uh, revolve and uh, using the circular pattern feature. So we've got our basic shape for our grenade over here. I'm selecting all of the two bodies and I'm going to combine them just so it's one body instead of, how much is that, eight? So again, just keeping everything organized and it will make it a lot easier to select that top lane as well, which I'm doing right now. I'm selecting the top lane and I'm creating a sketch and I'm just uh, unhiding that sketch option over there. Again, I'm just drawing out a circle over here, making sure that I select... Uh, make sure that the entire sketch is selected and then I'm extruding this as a new body and you'll see I'm adding a taper angle here minus 20 degrees and the taper basically allows it to go at the exact same angle as the grenade if you just paid attention to that you'll see 
So play around with your taper value until you get a particular angle that you're happy with. And now I'm going to be editing the bottom as well. Uh, you'll see I'm actually going to be changing the shape a little bit because currently we've got the classic MK2 shape with this bottom piece. So if you guys want to keep this bottom piece and if you're going for a classic MK2 grenade, I recommend doing what I'm doing right now. But uh, if you're going for the sci-fi look, I'm, I actually am going to be changing this. Uh, so this entire piece here at the bottom won't be included. But I'm just, you know, including this so you guys can can see what uh, techniques I'm using here to create this grenade. Okay, so again, just adding detail to the bottom section. Using our sketch over there. Offsetting it. Some more details. So I'm going to select the sketch, right click and extrude. Drag it upwards, it turns red, which means it's making a cut. We've cut into our mesh right now to create some more detail. And over there, I just realized that I the distance that I cut in was a bit too far. So I just uh, went back and adjusted that. I'm going to apply a fillet because it adds a nice soft transition. Again, holding down control to select more than one edge. Alright, so we've created that bottom section. So now we have the classic MK2 grenade shape. Um, again, if you guys really wanted to be accurate, you could really play, uh, pay uh, close attention to the actual sketch or blueprint of an MK2 grenade. Like I said, I am redesigning this, so I don't want everything to be exactly the same. You'll see I selected that top plane. I'm creating another sketch on there. Uh, we'll be extruding this. And again, we're going to be adding a taper angle. So this is that, that top section that you see on the grenade. And this is how I created it. I was just a, it was just an extrude with a particular taper angle applied to it. Um, and I'm going to make sure that my operation in the moment is not on join. It actually needs to be on new body. Or I might leave it. Okay, so I am leaving it on join because I'm actually going to be blending. Um, you'll see in a moment I'll be blending that edge. Yeah, there we go. I'm selecting this edge. I'm applying a fillet to it so it allows it to dynamically blend into that bottom piece of geometry that we just created. Okay. Just analyzing the mesh. Again, selecting this, uh, creating a sketch, making sure that my sketch is visible. And I'm just, you know, in the early uh, stages, I'm actually adding some more detail to the design. So again, using the offset function there. Hi everyone, my name is yeah, Travis Davidson and in today's tutorial what we're doing right I'll now is having fun to create something that goes boom. boom. It's you a find particular shape, but it's you know, not just any grenade because ahead. we will be Use concepting and, and reimagining the classic MK2 yeah, grenade, edge also known as the pineapple grenade. Cut. Now this entire tutorial just is aimed at intermediate users, as I'm going to assume that you guys have created a couple of items within Fusion 360 before you get started. Because I won't be covering any of the interface, and I won't be really explaining any of the tools. Again, just adding some fillets. Again, it's all welcome to give it a try as well. I mean, go ahead, accept the challenge, and just do it. Know your edges. You know, there's a bunch of techniques have some in this nice tutorial that I haven't uh, them. Obviously, you don't apply any of my other tutorials. To everything you have to I'll be buy showing you how to use the circular pattern so function just be aware effectively of that, and creatively. I'll be showing you how to use the revolve function within Fusion 360 nice smooth and the sweep function to create some certain interesting edges, so geometry. I'm applying that for All right. There. So, without further ado, let's Looking get started. Right. So, I'm just going to be going back, adding some more detail to the design. Selecting these edges, I'm going to apply a fillet to them because you know this actually looks really nice in the renders. And then I'm going to be constructing a tangent plane on the shape here at the top because um, if I select that shape, I can't uh, sketch on it. So by creating a tangent plane, uh, it creates it at that angle, and I'm able to select this plane and then start sketching on it. So this can really come in handy uh, if you've got shapes at particular angles that you can't really select and sketch on. Tangent plane will solve that for you. Then you, then you can see I selected that, that plane. I'm sketching on it right now. I'm selecting a center to center slot under the sketch menu. And I'm just going to be drawing out a particular shape here. Now, um, later on, you'll see like, at the end of this design, I actually decided to change this uh, because I didn't really find this to be, you know, 
aesthetically pleasing so i decided to remove it uh, but that's why we have that timeline feature at the bottom that timeline feature is extremely powerful it allows us to go back in time and remove uh, particular features as well so if you guys want to go with this particular detail you're capable of doing that i sketched that out and now i'm basically cutting into that mesh into the object and i'm applying a fillet to it to give it a nice soft transition and you'll see i'll be using the pattern function again uh, to pattern this particular cut and fill it right around this object so I'm gonna go to create pattern circular pattern and this time the object on my timeline you'll see I'll be selecting the fillet and the cut and then my axis is going to be uh, the circle at the top and you can see I'm just inputting a particular value there I'll say about 8 and it basically copies that cut and the fillet right around that object so that's a really cool and creative way to use uh, the pattern feature you can see I went back on my timeline over there and also to edit uh, particular functions on your timeline just double click on it so I just went back there I adjusted that fillet I'm creating another tangent plane and because I'm going to be adding some more detail to the grenade now now this particular feature I end up leaving it in it's just like these tiny circles that I'm going to be creating and you can see I'm angling the tangent plane uh, correctly just so I can sketch at the perfect angle see I'm creating a a circle here a center diameter circle selecting my sketch and I'm going to do an extrude like in another extrude and just like what we did earlier uh, by applying a fillet and then going to the pattern function I'm going to be doing the exact same thing so you get to see that entire process again so again we'll be going to the create menu pattern circular pattern and then I'm going to be making sure that I select the fillet and the cut as my objects and the axis is going to be that circle just inputting the value there eight times I want it to be patterned around there so you guys can go ahead play around with that feature see what you can come up with and um, you'll see I'll be going back on my timeline and readjusting this taper at the top so again that's why the timeline feature is extremely powerful because it allows you to go back and make changes to your design without it being completely destructive now I'm actually this is the part you'll see in a moment this is where I'm going to be changing up the design over here this is where I create my sci-fi design so if you guys want to keep the original shape you more than welcome to do that but I'm changing the shape right now you can see I went to the sketch and I'm going to be drawing a line I'm going to make sure that this goes right through the center of my design and I'm going to be splitting the body here in a moment so it's very important that I draw this as a reference line to split from you'll see I went to modify split body I'm selecting this is the body and my splitting tool is the line as soon as I click on that it's basically cut my body in half you'll see now you've got a top section a body and a bottom section All right so I'm removing that bottom section because I'm going to be taking the top I'm going to copy paste it and I'm going to rotate it um, and I'll be using my top piece as my bottom piece as well and this is how I created that that new shape so this is basically me reimagining the design while still keeping in that classic pineapple uh, design aesthetic that was on the original grenade now you can see I'm just going in here and uh, you know I already added this detail to the other design but I mean since we recreating the design now, I just have to go back in insert these details again so I just sketch that out extruding it and applying a fillet for a nice smooth transition click on OK and alright so we've got our sci-fi shape over here okay so it's time we're actually going to be creating some of the really important components of this grenade going to be creating the fuse the spoon uh, we'll be creating the pin and the ring as well and some other details so this is how I went about creating this entire section you can show I'm extruding here and creating new bodies and you'll see I created two new bodies so that allows me to uh, apply different materials that's why if you look at the, the actual product image there's a real a yellow a cylinder shape there as well so that's why it was a separate body 
and now we're sketching out the shape for our for our fuse. See, I was just trying to find the center. Even a few areas here. Like I said, um, I didn't reference the original design that accurately. Uh, I think I should have done that because I think the overall height for my fuse wasn't high enough. Um, so I'd recommend just turn on the canvas again and try and reference the overall height of the fuse if you wanted to look a little bit better because obviously there's still certain aspects of the design that I wasn't entirely happy with even at the end of this entire process so I'm just trying to rectify that right now so just turn on the canvas and look at the overall height of the fuse and make sure that it's correct you can see I just joined those sketches together and now I'm extruding extruding this upwards and you'll see uh, like I said I didn't go to the correct height because I wasn't referencing a sketch that I inserted here I don't know why I didn't do that Now you can see I'm sketching on that edge and I'm basically this is where I'm going to be creating this cut. And now, so I just made a cut there and then just to get rid of this piece again, just select that edge, drag right through it to make the cut. Selecting these edges and I'm going to apply a fillet to them, make this in round. Okay, I'm just making it sh making sure that I'm moving it back and it's lining up with that cylinder that we created earlier. And I'm joining those two together because I'm going to create a nice smooth transition. So I'm just selecting this edge. You'll see as I apply this fillet, it's giving me this really, really nice transition. So I'm getting it to a particular height that I'm comfortable with. And now I'm just applying a chamfer over here to show that separation between the fuse and, you know, just that, that um, I mean, this is part of the fuse, but there's that yellow uh, cylinder shape that we see on the design. So I'm just doing that to create that separation. Analyzing my design, going back in the timeline and also guys, if, if there's particular features you want to edit, you'll see that I actually selected the fillet and then I right click. You can right click and go to edit feature or you can find the feature on your timeline and then just double click and edit it from there. And you can see I'm selecting that top face and I went to press pull just to adjust the height. And I'm applying a fillet to this section. Giving it a round edge. So you can see I actually went back, I removed that fillet because I realized that I actually have to round off the top first before I fillet uh, these edges. Making sure that fillet goes all the way through. and just applying some more fillets around the entire design because like I said this looks really nice in the renders and it also removes that that blocky uh, design aesthetic that we see now over here we're actually going to be creating the spoon so you can see I just selected one of those planes to sketch on and um, you'll see over here I'm going to be creating an arch in a moment and in order to actually create that arch, you can see I just created an arch. In order to do that, you want to uh, click and hold down your left mouse button. And as soon as you hold down your left mouse button, it automatically creates that arch for you. So you guys are free to create whatever shape you want over here. But I was trying to go for a classic MK2 uh, shape, but obviously adjusting it slightly since we're reimagining this design. So again, just going back, adjusting some of these sketches until I create something that I'm happy with. You'll see in a moment, uh, once I've created the sketch, I'm basically going to be extruding it out uh, on top of this. And that will 
be our spoon. Now in my case, uh, the handle that you see on the spoon, well actually the entire spoon is one piece, but uh, I created my that handle section uh, separately uh, because I wanted it to be its own material and I just thought that it looked really cool if I actually separated it. So it's separated but still joined if <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. All right, and then you can see I'm just applying some fillets here to those uh, sharp edges. I'm trying to get rid of that blockiness. Okay, and applying some more fillets, giving it some nice round edges. All right, so we've completed our sketch and I'll be able to extrude this out. Making sure that it uh, basically exceeds the overall width of the fuse. Okay, and selecting this face, and I'm just going to press pull. Just to extend that out a little bit. All right, and we'll continue to edit our spoon. So just applying some fillets. And selecting that front face and I think I realized over here that my spoon just wasn't I didn't uh, make the distance far enough so I'm just using that press pull function which you can just right click and then press pull just to increase the overall distance and then again adding, adding those uh, legendary fillets which I seem to add to everything <laughs> uh, yeah I really love fillets they just make things look really, really nice in the render. And like I said, it, it removes that blockiness. But I mean, if that's something you're going for, then hey, it's completely up to you guys. Okay, and just analyzing the design. And then I realized that I still didn't extend this far enough. So again, I'm just selecting that front plane and I'm using the push-pull command. and just analyzing it from a distance and you can see I went into the patch workspace and now we're actually going to be creating that handle that you see on on the spoon so you can see I'm using the I'm going to be using the line and the spline tool over here now I actually do end up changing the entire design of this handle because I honestly speaking I just don't like how it looks but I'm just showing you the overall technique over here so you can see under workspace I went out of model and I went into patch and patch is gonna, you'll see in a moment, it'll basically allow me to extrude a single line. So instead of having to complete a sketch, I'll be able to extrude a line. You'll see that in a moment. So like I said, this handle, I wasn't happy with the overall design. Um, so I just left this in to show you the technique I'm using here so that you guys know how to create your own handles. So you'll see once I have the completed line, I'm gonna extrude it and then I'm gonna add thickness to it. and. Uh, as far as I know, you can only do this particular function within patch, and this is the only reason why I use the patch workspace, because it makes this particular process very easy. Again, just combining the lines and the spline. And at the okay, you'll see uh, I selected my line. I went to create an extrude, and now I'm able to add width to this line that we created and then I'm going to go to create again and I'm going to go to thicken and now I can add thickness uh, to the spline so again this is a really useful way to to actually create complex geomet geometry in Fusion 360 uh, using the patch function by extruding a single line that doesn't have to be a completed sketch and then adding thickness to it so play around with that and I think I, my overall thickness that I add is just one millimeter uh, that thickness should be fine because I use that exact same thickness in the final uh, handle design as well then again just lining it up with the spoon at the top now I'm just selecting that plane again using press pull making sure that I'll just get it lined up with the spoon. 
because like I said in this case this handle and the spoon were separated but so I have to just line this up so that it looks like one piece even though it's technically not one piece as you can see I really didn't like the overall shape of this handle so I do end up changing it later uh, to something that just flows a lot better so I went through a lot of trial and error to get the handle design that you see in the final product image so just play around with that until you get something you're happy with okay right so I'm selecting that face and uh, you'll see that the overall a width of my spoon I felt like the overall width it just wasn't correct so I'm just extending this okay, making sure that the dimensions are the same on both sides um, I actually wish there was a function to push-pull faces symmetrically but unfortunately there isn't unless there is a method to do that as you can see uh, that fillet I wasn't happy with it so I just deleted it off the timeline and I'm just playing around here trying to see maybe if a chamfer works better I don't remember exactly but I think I also replaced this chamfer with the fillet later on yeah, making sure everything just lines up here <clears throat> okay so once the handle is lined up with that top part of the spoon we're going to move on and um, actually what I'm doing now I'm hiding all of the bodies because I'm going to be making a cut I'm going to draw like a rectangular pattern and just fill at the edges to give it a nice round edge and I'm going to be making a cut through this handle and again um, when I actually redesign the handle I leave in this particular design aesthetic because I think it looks pretty cool uh, with this whole uh, cut or separation so this is exactly how I did it and the reason why I'm hiding every single body is because I don't want to make a cut through the other bodies so it's very important that you hide those bodies and just have the body uh, visible that you want to cut through so as you can see there I'm applying fillets uh, to all of these points and again hold down control to select more than one edge or one point so that you can apply that particular fillet value to more than one point or one edge. Alright so I'm going to select this face. Um, I, see I actually had to hide the handle body there because I couldn't see my sketch properly but now I'm just unhiding the the handle and then you see I made a cut through this and I thought it was a pretty cool design aesthetic but like I said this handle doesn't really look that great and it looks really cool on the final handle and I'm just uh, unhiding all of the other bodies again oh, and that makes me sound like a serial killer unhiding all of the bodies <laughs> anyway uh, as you can see on this particular handle I actually had to fill it that particular edge because I wanted my fillet to be complete and if I didn't fillet these edges it will basically stop at a particular point so by filleting those edges it will allow my fillet to be completed and my fillet on my chamfer again I'm leaving this all in just so you guys can see the different techniques that I'm using uh, to create this handle even though I end up recreating it I think it's important that I, I leave stuff like this in just so you can see my techniques right analyzing the design 
Okay, so you can see I created a plane um, on the back over there, and we're going to be creating the lug. Now again, I actually, uh, later on I think I end up redesigning this part as well. Not entirely, but um, the way I designed this particular lug that's attached to the fuse over here, I just wasn't really happy with it. Uh, so you'll see later on, I do end up changing this, but this is just to give you an idea of how I went about creating this particular section that gets attached to the fuse and how I created the lug. Again, it's all in the sketching, man. Sketching is extremely, extremely powerful. If you know how to plan your sketches effectively, you can create some complex geometry and just some awesome stuff in Fusion 360. This is why I, I love this program. I think it's amazing. Then I just go back and, and say end up trimming off certain areas because it's obviously a particular shape that I'm going for. I'm able to create new geometry out of this, make sure it's a new body. Okay, making sure it lines up with those those edges. I'm just having a little bit of trouble actually lining this up, so I had to um, actually had to adjust certain values there, make sure that it lined up properly. So again, just typing in some values, try and line this up. Having a little bit of trouble here. All right, so we've created uh, that compartment that's attached to the fuse and with a lug. It's inserted. Okay, now you can see there was like a really, it's like a hard edge, so I'm just trying to apply a filature to make that overall transition a lot smoother. Right, so now we're actually going to be creating the lug. So I'm just using that sketch that we actually created earlier because it already had a, a uh, circle on it. And I just extruded that as a new body. Yeah, for this case, I'm definitely giving that lug a nice uh, hard edge with the chamfer. So again, it looks really nice in the final render. Right, so you'll see I'm selecting this plane, I'm going to create a sketch and uh, you'll see during this process I'm actually adding in just a bunch of smaller details over here. So again, um, you know, you can follow along with me and create the exact same details or, you know, you can, this is where your, your creative freedom comes in, you can create your own designs here, but this is what I decided to go with. So just creating two circles over there creating a cut and then 
Of course, I'm going to apply the legendary fillet just to give it a nice soft transition. And again, this looks really, really nice in the renders, especially when you're just applying a fillet to that edge and it just blends in with the overall uh, object. And you can see actually, uh, I went back and uh, I just felt like this wasn't positioned correctly. So again, I'm just selecting uh, the, the, the entire sketch and I just pressed a shortcut M for move, just to move that into position. And again, just a re uh, reapplying the fillets. Again, selecting the top face and uh, you can see I'm using the offset function and this is how I created this detail. Um, I think this was actually, I never planned ahead for this. Uh, it's just a, something that happened by chance that ended up working really well. Again, just making sure I'm applying fillets because I really like rounded edges. And of course, I'll be selecting the sketch and then uh, creating a cut. So that's a detail that you see on the final product image. And you know, this this was definitely a part of the design that I really really liked. This had created some really nice shapes. And I'm just going to go ahead, select that, and I'm going to create a cut that goes all the way through. Then I realized that. Um, after I review this, it just it doesn't look correct, so I, I actually end up making the cut to a certain distance instead of right through. You'll see that in a moment. I'm just going to adjust that. See, like there's that spacing over there, and I wasn't really happy with that, so I'm just undoing that operation, uh, going back, and I'm going to apply the cut just to a particular distance. Okay, and just hide in certain bodies so that I don't uh, cut other bodies by accident. And again, applying a fillet, uh, or, or trying to apply a fillet to that uh, inner edge. And you can see I can only apply a small amount. And I think it's the way that sketch was created as well. So obviously there's limitations to everything. But um, as long as I can still apply a fillet in there, uh, it's going to look really nice in the final render. Okay. And then I'm going to continue uh, to add some more detail. We're actually going to create the, this is the section for the safety pin in the ring. So I'm drawing out a sketch here for the safety pin. I know there's certain parts of here where I have trouble navigating. Uh, my workspace starts going a little bit crazy. Uh, so just bear with me. Uh, so I created that sketch, just extruding that. And th that's basically the safety pin. We're obviously going to be adding onto that. You see, I'm going to create an. I think I'm, I'm creating a torus over here, and obviously the ring uh, is going to go through the torus and be supported by the torus. So just in the overall dimension here. Again, like I said, my my workspace was going a little bit crazy here, but uh, you'll still be able to follow along with what I'm doing. Just just playing around with that inner uh, diameter until I get a shape that I'm happy with, and I think from there um, I'll just end up scaling it down. You'll see. Um, I'm going to modify scale. Um, I'm making sure that it's on uniform by scale type and then just scaling this down. I'm just going to rotate that. And I'll basically be combining this tor uh, torus 
uh, onto that safety pin uh, to make it one complete object. moving that center slider so that I can move it around without any constraints and once it's in position I'm going to modify and combine and I'm combining those two together so that it's one object <laughs> you can see like my workspace is going crazy here and I think it's because I'm zoomed in so closely that sometimes the camera just starts acting crazy. And now you can see I'm selecting the front plane and I'm um, just going to uh, extrude it back. Obviously not all the way through, just to a particular distance that I'm happy with. Again, creating. Um, we're trying. I was trying to create a, a smooth transition by these edges, uh, but the filler just refused to cooperate with me here uh, for some reason, and then uh, I decided to just leave that out. Uh, but I did want to extrude this back, so again, I had to play around with the overall uh, values over here, the millimeter value, until I got to a distance that I was happy with. And it feels like I'm working for an eternity on the safety pin. Uh, so it actually did give me a little bit of trouble. And uh, it's such a simple object. I don't know why I'm experiencing so much trouble with it. And then this is where I realized that this was probably the best option to make that cut instead of just extruding back on that cylinder. Hey, and then finally, I've got a shape that I'm happy with. Right, so you see I'm creating a center diameter circle, and I'm going to be showing you guys, um, we're basically going to be sweeping a sketch on this, so there's a pretty cool technique with this over here that we're going to be using and I'm making sure that I'm cutting it uh, halfway you see that I actually wasn't in the center there so we're basically going to be sweeping a cylinder around this cylinder path uh, using sweep it's a pretty useful technique and you'll see it in a moment so just adjusting my sketch until I uh, get this overall shape that I'm looking for and I'm making sure that it's just uh, a line uh, because we're going to be constructing a plane along a path so this line is our path and you'll see that I'm going to construct and plane along path now I can put a plane anywhere along this path I'm going to place mine right at the top at the start and that white dot basically indicates where uh, the line starts so I'm creating a cylinder right at that beginning part and you'll see that I'm basically going to sweep that sketch you see I went to sweep uh, my profile is a sketch and my path is that line and as you can see when you've completed that operation it sweep that sketch along the path now you can create any uh, any particular shape over there and sweep it along that path as well so you you guys can get creative with that uh, play around with that particular feature as well and that technique so you can see I just duplicated that and I'm just angling it uh, correctly to create the ring and then I'll be joining these two together so that it's one object
just trying to line it up as close as possible so we'll be joining these two together and yeah this is this is basically how you create that that ring that you see on the grenades I was initially going to go for a ring that was shaped like a triangle but then I realized that it just didn't look that great with this particular design I've seen it on other grenades as well and they work well with those particular designs but for this design I wanted to go with a classic uh, circular ring okay, and just, just trying to line it up and then obviously we'll be going to modify and combine and joining these two together that looks about right Right, so we'll go to modify, combine those two together and join them. And we've created our ring. So now all we need to do is uh, position our ring by the safety pin. And just rotating it so so that it's uh, resting against uh, the body of the grenade and, and the spoon. I'm just trying to get a a good angle, and also trying to make sure that it's not intersecting with anything. Like as you can see, there it's actually intersecting with the body, and I had to fix that, so I had to scale this down. Again, just repositioning it. And just rescaling it. Now I probably should have cut this section a little bit shorter, so it's a little bit boring to watch since we're just scaling and repositioning a, a ring that's already been created. Uh, but I decided to leave it in just so you can see how I position this effectively so that it doesn't intersect with our grenade, uh, with the body and the spoon. Right, and that should be perfect. We've created our safety pin in our ring. You can see now there's been some materials applied to this. Uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. You can see I'm selecting that front plane and then again uh, we're just creating some more details. So I created a single circle. I'm selecting its edge. I'm going to rectangular pattern and this allows me to create uh, patterns of, the, of a particular sketch and you can see I'm able to drag horizontally and vertically uh, to, and then you can obviously input a particular value there how many times you want it to be patterned or along the horizontal x um, uh, horizontally or vertically and then just repositioning it and then just some small details and I just I really love adding small details like this I'm going to go back and just select all of these edges and again uh, apply a fillet to the edge with a chamfer right going for hard edges this time right, so you see I select that uh, work plane and now I'm basically going to use the sweep function again. I'm creating my double safety over here. So uh, again, it's up to you guys if you want to include this in your design. I wanted to do this, just add something a little bit different. So again, just like what we did earlier, I'm constructing a plane along a path and I'll be sweeping a particular sketch along this path, uh, which is going to be a, a circle. So I created that sketch and I'm going to sweep it along this path and create it as a new body.
Now you see its current position um, would have never have worked um, if I didn't put in that safety that safety button because the the spoon would have never been able to fall off the grenade and that would have <laughs> inevitably meant that the grenade would have never been able to function. So you have to take all of that, keep all of that in mind when you're designing stuff like this. Think about the overall um, functionality of the grenade as well. So I ended up uh, changing that later on and actually trying to figure out a way for this this particular function to make sense. So I added in that button so that when you actually press that button, it releases uh, this safety uh, pin safety feature of the grenade so that the grenade can actually explode. You saw that I was just scaling it. Now, ah, okay, I selected that top plane and again we're just adding some more detail so just like what I did earlier with that uh, rectangular pattern feature I'm going to draw out a sketch again then I'll select all of the edges of that sketch I'll go to sketch and I'll go to rectangular pattern and I'll be able to create a pattern out of that sketch. You'll see I'm selecting all of the edges on it. I'm just going to redraw it until I'm happy with the particular sketch. Selecting all of the edges. Going to sketch, rectangular pattern and I'll just drag on that line. Input a particular value that I want. And of course oh, this time instead of uh, creating a cut I'm actually going to extrude this upwards and join it and then I'll be adding a fillet to those bottom edges so that it again just uh, blends in with the with the spoon. And you'll notice earlier I actually added some more detail to the safety pin area but again that was just extruding the sketch. I think you guys should be used to it by now but anyway I'm selecting this edge I'm crea uh, creating a plane along a path making sure you'll see I'm looking for there's a particular point where it snaps so it's actually uh, at like the center and then uh, we're going to be using that sweep function again over here so I'm just drawing out a uh, cube and there's like basically a separation over here there's multiple ways to create these separations. You can sweep them or you can split the body and then just fill it or champ for the edges. But I'm showing you the sweep method. Same thing like what we did earlier to actually create the shape of the grenade. So again, we've got our uh, sketch over there. We're going to go and sweep this. Select that as a profile and then our path. Uh, create it as a cut. Okay, then adding some more, some more detail, this time a chamfer. And as you can see there, uh, there was a mistake that actually cut through the ring. So I'm going to have to hide the ring and then repeat that operation. So that's why I said it's important when you're doing stuff like this, uh, plan ahead and make sure that before you complete the operation that it doesn't intersect with or cut other objects in your project. Okay. Okay, this time we're actually going to be splitting the body. So I just selected that plane that was at the back. And I'm just going to draw a particular pattern on here. Nice, uh, like, hard surface or, I don't know, industrial pattern. You'll see in a moment. But I just split the body over here again. Splitting the body allows me to create, like, these separation lines. And obviously once the body has been split, it allows me to apply a different material to the split body. So... 
They can also come in handy if you're trying to create different materials for different parts of your design. You can just use the split function. As you can see, it's a quick way to create those nice, very small but very clean uh, split lines. And it's a nice hard surface detail that gets added. Then again, I'm going to be splitting this body here, and now I'm going to be drawing out a like a sci-fi or industrial shape over here. Now, um, you can leave those edges hard, but I'm just going to round this off. And again, I'll be splitting the body. Adding those fillets to create the separation line. This has to be a small amount. Uh, it depends on how big you want your separation line to be, but I like these small, nice clean cut separation lines. Alright, so I'm going to be creating a tangent plane on that bottom part because you'll see the it's that bottom part is lacking some detail, so we're just going to create some detail here at the bottom. Again, creating a tangent plane so that we'll be able to sketch at that particular angle. And we'll be using the pattern feature here again, so I'm creating a center to center slot. Yeah, this, like I said, I'm um, just basically showing you how to effectively use that, that pattern feature and how to creatively use it using your sketches. So again I'm just making a cut into the grenade here and then I'll be applying a fillet and I'm just basically just going to pattern this in a, in a circular pattern. Create pattern, circular pattern, make sure I'm selecting the fillet and the cut is my object and the axis is that circle. I'm going to pattern this eight times and that's basically how, how I created that detail at the bottom. Now I'm going back to that sketch um, that I created earlier on, that sci-fi sketch, and I'm basically going to duplicate the sketch and rotate it. And this is how we'll be making basically the same pattern at the bottom. So I'm just duplicating this, I'm rotating it and then I'll be splitting the body at the bottom and then applying fillets to create those cut lines. So I have to select all edges and then control C, control V, copy paste, rotate 180 degrees, make sure it's lined up with this one. Then I'll just drag this down just make sure my object's visible here. Drag it down into position and then uh, I just want to make sure that the sketch it has to extend past the object or else it's not going to make a complete uh, it won't complete the split body operation. See so just extending those lines and now we'll be able to split the body Okay, and then just like what we did earlier, going back, applying fillets, creating those cut lines. Okay, that's how I added the detail at the bottom. You can see guys, if you haven't noticed already, I've actually got the new handle on there. And uh, that's the handle that you obviously see in the final product image and that's what I was happy with. Now I'm adjusting the the spoon and the lug area. I'm actually uh, selecting the top plane I'm going to be making a cut over here. Because this is where I realized that the overall design of this section just wasn't correct after I was analyzing uh, some grenade design. So 
just it didn't make it didn't really make any sense so I'm just gonna be creating a cut over here and I'm gonna create uh, you'll see that I wanted to appear as though the this like th this lug area is actually attached to the fuse you'll see that in a moment so just selecting the top plane and then I'll be extruding this downwards to make a cut I want to make sure that I'm hiding the fuse because you can see it's cutting through the fuse there and I don't want that to happen so I'll just hide the fuse quickly and now I can make my cut freely like I said this just makes a lot more sense and it also looks pretty cool Now I'm busy searching for the lug. You can see there's some objects that I created earlier. Like I said, I actually tried to make a triangular, a triangular a ring, and uh, I found the lug. And now I'm going to be sketching again on that top plane and just drawing out a, another a rectangle. And that rectangle is basically going to be sketched in such a way so that it looks like it's attached to the lug and then obviously it will be attached to the fuse just going to create this as a new body and obviously I'll be selecting the top plane and I'll just be using the press pull command to get it to the same height as the lug alright then I'll be joining those two together I'll be combining them as you can see I over here this was basically uh, protruding out of the fuse so I just selected that plane and just use press pull command to push it into the fuse there just to get rid of it analyzing my object making sure everything looks really nice see over there I just right click and I went to appearance and that's basically where you apply materials uh, but like I said I have a complete tutorial on that it's on my YouTube channel Now yeah, I'm just going back and making sure that um, this actually lines up with this edge and I created that as a new body uh, first and foremost was to try to join it and then I'm rejoining it and I'll be able to create a nice fillet transition in a moment you'll see you'll see that so now I can select this edge since it's all joined and when I fillet this it creates this nice smooth transition between that object the one that was just joined and I can do the same thing on this side so it was just that right hand side that wasn't lined up correctly then just giving me a nice smooth transition and then again it's just these small details that look really nice in the final render so that's why I include them again just adding some more detail to this front part of the spoon so I just selected that, right click, went to create sketch. You can see I'm drawing a line through the center of that circle so that it creates like that separation. And I can create that top part now and I can extrude that in and make a nice cut. Then going back and just selecting that sketch that we just drew. I'm going to offset that and again just in small details. Um, if you're going for really close up shots, uh, this is some really nice details to look at. So it's completely up to you how you plan on uh, with your final render, 
how you plan on uh, actually setting up your camera. But I, like I said, I like adding in these small details. Okay. Again, uh, just extruding this as a new body. Just so I can apply, uh, so it can have its own material. Applying the chamfer to those edges. You see, I just went back and um, I noticed that this particular safety that I created, it was just a, a particular section over here that was not really looking that great. So I'm just going to adjust that quickly. It's going to use extrude and just cut it back a little bit. So if you created this safety feature, I recommend doing this. At it's completely up to you guys. Like I said, I gave you that creative freedom to do whatever you want uh, by creating a double safety or leaving it as just a single safety mechanism. Then again, uh, obviously this second, this double safety mechanism, I'll end up moving it just a little bit forward because where it's positioned now again, uh, wasn't happy with the overall position and you can see I'm just applying some fillets here again to these edges just so they blend a lot better. Like I said this was that detail that I created earlier and I didn't really record this but I'm sure you guys are capable of actually creating that. It's just the sketch that was there earlier and I just extruded it as a new body. And now I'm just creating some more detail here for the safety pin. Again, some more smaller details that look really nice in the final render. I'm going to have to hide the safety pin so I can actually get to this edge. See in a moment, it's going to add a, some nice detail there, and it's going to look like the safety pin is actually inserted into this particular section. As you can see, okay, so I think I'm finished with the grenade. Um, now that I'm actually analyzing it, there is something that I would have changed. And if I bring up the product image, uh, this was actually rendered in Keyshot, by the way, everything, the labels, the texturing. But if I just zoom in here quickly and uh, we look at this grenade over here, you'll see that, you know, we have these separation lines over here. I would have tried to add maybe a smaller separation line at the top because it looks like this particular separation line just stops here. And this doesn't look that nice. So I would have tried to add some kind of separation line over here, maybe using the sweep function or splitting this body and then applying a fillet or a chamfer to those edges. So I would have adjusted that. And then uh, just like I said earlier on in the tutorial, I would have adjusted the overall uh, height of this fuse and paid more attention to that canvas that I inserted earlier. But uh, apart from that, um, I think I'm happy with the overall design. Okay. All right, congratulations guys. You've made it to the end of this tutorial. You are now equipped with the knowledge to create your own mk2 grenade and this grenade is going to cause a mess and dismemberment is guaranteed <laughs> all right uh, anyway you'll see that i've actually added some more details on here and i didn't feel the need to record this because i think if you've made it this far in the tutorial i think you're capable of you know adding your own details to your design so this is where i'm going to let your creative freedom come in uh, but you'll see that i've added some extra details here like uh, i've added this little button on here because uh, you'll notice this uh, piece that I designed here was actually, there's like a double safety on this grenade, right? We've got the, the, ring, the ring over here with the pin, and then I just included this double safety because you'll notice that um, the actual spoon is incapable of 
uh, falling off the grenade due to this so like I said this is double safety so if they want to actually use this grenade they'll have to uh, press this button here so I just added this little decal uh, you know just some small details and then added some more details here on the back because you'll notice that I didn't want to mirror this exact same design over here I wanted something different on this side so just some smaller details here as well and over here by the, the pin uh, but you guys can go ahead you can have fun with that you can create your your own details um, now you'll notice that throughout the process this grenade was changing colors and you're probably wondering how I did that now I have described this entire process uh, in a YouTube video so in the actual um, I think it's the information text document that I've included with this file or if you're actually watching this on YouTube right now uh, there's a link in the description to the materials and uh, how to do materials and rendering with the Infusion 360 so I won't be covering that now but something that I will show you really quickly and I have uh, just um, basically showed you how to do this in another tutorial but so you're probably wondering how I actually applied this decal to the design with the Infusion 360 and it's really simple uh, let's say for example I want to apply a decal here so I just select this face and under here it says insert and decal so you click on that uh, you go and select the image I'll just go back to that folder let's see mk2 grenade and then I just created my own sticker here then you just click on open and you can basically you know just move these sliders increase decrease the size and you can go ahead and you can place some decals on your designs guys it's, it's that simple and uh, you just want to make sure that these images that you insert as decals uh, just to make the entire process a lot easier when you're actually placing them on here you want to save the decal as a PNG so that means uh, it should have a transparent background uh, so that it's just the image itself that you'll be placing on here and yeah, it'll make the entire you know placement process a lot easier alright anyway guys um, like I said I hope you've learned some useful tips and tricks from this tutorial uh, the main aim of a tutorial is to show you some useful tips and tricks and different techniques that I use in my workflow that you can now utilize in yours. Uh, but I want you guys to go ahead and uh, create another grenade, right? You've learned some techniques in here, so put that to practice. Create another grenade, see what you can come up with. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Th thanks for taking the time to watch my tutorial. And uh, I'll be releasing more tutorials soon. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Alright, goodbye.